Good morning. So this is my first project for the season. And by season, I mean winter time. But anyway, uh, I used my uh, wood turning segmenting pro software to help me out <clears throat> with these patterns on its paint program. I hand drew uh, to, to scale or a half vision of the scale of the vessel that I'll create. And it's going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of about 29 inches tall, give or take. By the time I get all the rings made and sanded flat. So this pattern will be in the lower section from here to like up here. Ring, uh, ring two through ring 13. And then this pattern will be in the upper section, ring number 14 through ring number 30. Wood species used in this project will be mahogany, elm, cherry, mahogany, elm, myrtle wood, cherry, and maple. Uh, the feature ring is going to consist of a pattern very similar to this. I believe I have a method now in my head that I can prove, improve upon it to make it actually come out looking like that. I'm going to try it. It will be made up of hard maple and windy. And then it's going to border. It's going to be in this area right here. And then it's gonna border a chevron pattern in here. It's gonna be made of hard maple and tiger wood. I have some tiger wood, old tiger wood flooring or planks, decking that I am gonna cut and make a nice chevron pattern through here of about three or so inches high. It's gonna be about 14 inches in diameter, 29 halt tall, and uh, right now somewhere in the neighborhood of 1800 plus on the segment count. Anyway, more to come. I like building my large waste blocks out of cabinet grade plywood. This waste block is going to be about an inch and a half thick by 12 inches in diameter. The first ring, the base ring, is going to be inch and a half cherry and will measure out at a little over 12 inches in diameter. The floating bottom will be made out of African mahogany. This floating bottom will be held in by a keeper ring. It will be made of mahogany and 36 segments per the ring. And this is how I, I put it in. I cut a rabbit into the bottom ring. The floating bottom will go in. It'll be waxed on the edges, keep any glue from sticking to it. And then the keeper ring will go in on top of that. Here it is. Now that I've got the floating bottom and the keeper ring installed in the first ring of the vessel, it's time to start milling up the rest of the lumber. So this uh, tiger wood flooring slash decking that I got years ago. I, I love it because it's a good hardwood. It's got some nice accent colors, but uh, it is twisted pretty much. But I take it, I take it running on the joiner until I get rid of the groove that's cut in it for the flooring slash decking. 
and I, uh, I get it nice and flat on that one side like that and it's nice and uh, flat it doesn't rock anymore I've taken all the twist out of it As you can see there's no twist so uh, I want to get this down to about 3 sixteenths a little more than 8 most probably 3 sixteenths or a touch more and uh, I'll either do that on the thickness planer or I'll I may do it and I'll end up with some remnants by cutting it to that thickness on the table saw after I cut it into like inch and a quarter wide strips and then I'll run the uh, sawed face through the belt sander or the drum sander there because this is going to be glued up in strips with uh, about the same thickness of hard maple hard maple i'll have to mill a little more hard maple i think because i have some here but i'll mill some more just for this and mill it down to uh, about 3 sixteenths of an inch and that's going to make part of the future ring which is going to end up being a chevron pattern anyway more to come So now that I've uh, jointed the face, and I've got all that, uh, got it nice and flat, and I've got that mill work out for the flooring slash decking, so I have a nice flat face, I need to make an edge, an edge of it that is square to the face. So we're gonna run it on the joiner here, on just the edge a few times. I'll take about a 64th at a time off. So I have my joiner set up. And I'll get a, a nice flat edge square to that flat face. There'll be a nice square edge to the flat face. And then we'll uh, we'll cut that uh, that spline groove off of each one of them on the table saw. We'll rip her down. And then uh, I'll start cutting inch and a quarter strips out of it before I start cutting 316 strips. Anyway, later. Now that I've got the tiger wood cut into quarter inch strips and the hard maple cut into quarter inch strips, I'm going to run them in through the drum sander and take off any uh, milling marks from the saw blade on the table saw. And then I'm going to bundle them up into strips or groups of 11. And then uh, I'll glue those 11 together and that will make the uh, start the setup with the chevron pattern. And then once all that's done and dried, I'll run a little bit through the drum sander, and then I'll run it through the thickness planer to clean everything up, and then I'm gonna cut them into 45 degree angles. Once the strips are cut at the 45 degree angle, I then realigned them and glued them back in to form, start forming the chevron. Then cut the tip and the tail off of it, and then cut the sides of it at an angle to make an 18 segmented ring. Well, it come out pretty good. I got it glued up. All in all, all the all the chevrons and zigzags are fairly close together, both top and bottom and such. Even on the inside, it didn't come out too bad. So I started at number one there. I numbered them all, how they were lined up the best. And uh, we're moving on. You'll see it all the way through the number 18. Come out pretty well. Not bad. 
kind of like it. I think it will work. There's a little misalignment there, but it ain't too bad. Better. So after milling up those little, I think they're like five, five eight, no, five sixteenths, five sixteenths strips. Yeah, I think this would be five sixteenth inch thick strips. I sanded, I ran them through the drum sander and sanded the edges that are glued together. Those will have to wait for tomorrow. These will all be used in making a part of the feature ring. That's gonna be the center of the feature ring. And then uh, everything you see glued together over there will make the feature ring that looks like this. Except, except I think I have a method that I'm gonna be able to fill in that middle section there. And uh, we'll see, make it look like the original picture, which is right here. Oh uh, yeah, here. So it will look like that one there when said and done. I think I got it figured out anyway. Later. This section of the feature ring, which I'm going to call a keyhole uh, feature ring, is made up of hard maple and windy. Well, I've taken video of this before with the uh, with my GoPro in a time lapse mode, but we'll show you no problem. Arbor Freight, little squeeze bottle, which I'll use a transfer back into. And then I just give it a little squeeze, each little location between each joint. This, uh, this joint's laid out on half inch wide masking tape, blue painter's tape. I ordered it up on a Amazon. And I just put a little squirt. Don't worry about spreading it around. It'll get squeezed. Have a little squeeze out top and bottom of the ring. I have set up my rubber band ring with my gluing, gluing ring on my little pegboard over here. Uh, we'll get to that here in just a moment. But uh, using this blue painter's tape, this is a 14. 14 and a half finished ring. It's about 14 and three quarters prior to finishing. You can take with that painter's tape on here and just roll this up, grab a hold of each end, and then transfer it over to the clamping ring the band setup on the pegboard there. And uh, then I'll show you go through pulling the, the nails. So, uh, yeah, this works pretty slick. I've, uh, I've uh, worked with a little larger diameter rings, but not much. And, uh, there we go. So I just try to pull the nail straight across, and let the ring and the rubber bands go together, and I come around to the center again, pull the other nail straight across, and the ring centers itself in the rubber band. And, uh, I put, I get these rubber bands also on Amazon. They're uh, made for holding up trash bags, large trash bags and large trash bags and uh, such. So, it across again. And as you see, the rubber bands pull in and start bringing the ring to center. Make a nice circle out of it. And don't get me wrong, I do use hose clamps clamped together in some rings, but on these smaller or thinner rings, made up of these laminated up um, quarter inch thick pieces of stock. I uh, like using multiple rubber bands. I got four of them piled up on this. And it pulls it together quite quickly, quite nicely. I use the wax paper on my pegboard that I've made and uh, it comes up pretty quick 
and then you can just work each individual segment as you need and uh, bring them in. Make sure they're all like you need it. Put them in there. Get them all even on the outside best you can. Inside, outside, get a little movement. And I uh, cleaned up a little of the glue on top. Wax paper, of course, is sacrificial. And it's laying on. Painters, blue painters tape, sacrificial. And uh, so this is a 18 segmented ring. It is a uh, that are cut at angles, 10 degrees, I believe it was. And then uh, 18 straight-sided, non-angled segments, I'm talking about 36. Then take a hammer, I do give it a little bit of force. Oh, oh, one of them slid off, we'll make do. And uh, give it a little tap here. the glue well this is this is 72 segments 36 at a five degree angle and 36 straights it's put down on a piece of quarter inch painters tape and I applied glue in between each one using my little Harbor Freight squirt bottle and this is only the second time I've done this so let's see if I can uh, accomplish getting it to go in a circle and then we'll clamp it with the rubber bands A little more trickier, but I've got the other one. So I think we'll make it with this one. Here we go. Uh, yeah, second time. Yeah. So, bring you up a little closer here and uh, we'll start releasing these rubber bands. I've done 36 segments individually without the painter's tape, quarter inch thick. But I decided to give this quarter inch thick painter's tape that I purchased on Amazon. And uh, it works here again. I got it the first time. Let's see if it does it again. And we got three rubber bands on here, three quarter inch 
rubber bands. I'm try to slip under a little bit. Don't let that happen. Seventy-two pieces. I've never done seventy-two piece rings. I've only done up to forty-eight last year. I did some several cool entries last year. I put, like I said, I put them together. I sent in the. Oh, I have videos on it. But anyway. And then once I get it on and get it lined up, I'll transfer it to the other bench. And, uh,. I know some people would have made a thicker ring and cut them in half and stuff like that, which, you know, that may or may not be easier. Get them all flat and such. I've had some people say that, but I enjoy doing the individual quarter-inch rings unless I'm laminating it into a pattern. Where I really need the pattern to be true. As in the, the earlier part of this feature ring, I had but uh, let's get it here. It's going together pretty nicely. Idea of that painter state and I can work the segments quicker but if nothing starts trying to set on me. I was using a type on three last year we were in the 48 individuals and separately there. Yeah okay that looks pretty good. Nope. Now that I've got the feature ring built, it's time to start cutting the segments for the rest of the vessel and building the rings. index it at 180 degrees from each other with a number one and a number two before clamping everything together. Well, I had some concern about getting this pattern to line up. So I'll sand it out nicely. It's going to take just a little bit of tweaking and keep turning it until I get them to match up. And, uh, I think it's going to work pretty well. 
This is a one one part of the feature ring. I'm gonna show you guys the tent. It's gonna work. I'm gonna pull it off. I had it. I knew I had it pretty much lined up on three sides, but uh, I couldn't. I couldn't see it on the fourth side. Anyway, I believe it will work. We'll get that one down there to do the same thing. Go. So that's pretty much the pattern that I just showed you in the last video. And it is made. It's consisted of three separate rings. This, uh, this part right in here is laminated together with wingy and maple, quarter inch wingy and maple, about a half inch thick. Then there's uh, three uprights right here. There are two wingy and one maple. So the, the grain drum in the opposite direction. And there's a, the top and the bottom of that is created the same. And then the last challenge was to make this center part right through here as a ring with a quarter inch wide maple uh, stock and a quarter inch thick by, I can't remember what the measurement was now, but it made that 30, I actually made it 72 segments. 72 segments is the center ring right there, right there. And uh, these others end up being 36. Well, because this is a laminated piece and these are laminated pieces. So when it's said and done, I have other rings that I'll put on it. It will make it bordered like that. Anyway. So the inside of it is turned up to right here. This is getting glued on today. I've got everything glued, but like this last little bit out here, the last two quarter inch rings. And we're gonna glue that on in just a moment. <coughs> but uh, this section of this feature ring is lined up a whole lot better than that one you see over there on the bench. That one didn't line up quite as well, but it's gonna be okay, it just didn't line up quite as well. But uh, it came out pretty good, actually. It's not perfect. I think once it's turned, it will blend in quite a bit better. And uh, it took a lot of work to get it to where it's at. I think it, all in all, it's gonna come out pretty damn good. We'll put that, uh, we'll turn the inside of this tomorrow, and then we'll put, we'll put the cone on it. That's right, we'll put the cone on it a big cone down there and the tail stop. We'll run it in nice and tight here and then I'm gonna start turning this. And then uh, before I glue any more on, that chevron pattern over there, that will go on next. After I get the, uh, the outside, the inside of this last little bit here, this bit here, and then I'll turn all of this to shape. And uh, before I install that Chevron pattern. Anyway, later. Well, I turned the inside. 
and a little bit I'll put that big cone on and I'll run it up to get it centered and start working the outside. But it come out pretty well. I sand it to 320. That's all I'm gonna sand the inside to. There's a little misalignment. And I noticed I had some splitting happening in my stock when I laminated up these three pieces here, or three strips, because I cut that piece out of strips. There's another one here too, but at first I just thought it was a chip, but the more I sanded, the bigger it got, but it's not on the outside. So if you look at that spot on the outside, it's not there. That would be like right in here. So anyway, and then the other one's the same way, but it came out pretty well. There's a touch of misalignment, but it ain't too bad. I'll know it's there, but other people must probably look at it and just realize that it's multiple pieces of wood. So anyway, okay, more to come later. Not too shabby, not too shabby at all. Inside of that chevron ring is turned. I will uh, continue to uh, stack and build the rest of the pattern. It's gonna look like this out here, which is waiting for me over on the bench. And uh, once I have it on and the inside of it turned, I will, uh, I will then turn the outside of all of that at once. So I have a, I have a, that right there to uh, glue on, stack and glue. Like I said, I'll turn the inside of that and then we'll uh, turn the outside of it all together, blend it all in. I have to take down get this to blend in because there's a little lip right there. I'll have to take a little more of this off and then we'll blend it in back here. But it should be no big deal. Anyway, that's where we're at. Later. Well, there it is. You can see some of the misalignment right in here upper ring it's not too bad I say from a distance you won't see it it was tough to get all three of those rings to line up these rings in this area were just better match and I mixed back and forth and I really couldn't come up I could get one at a real good see right in there it lines up good on the top and you know it's just kind of got a side that looks really good and it's gonna have a side that's kind of eh. but you know like I can say from a distance from a distance, you're not gonna see it as much. And uh, it's turned out pretty well. Now, of course, a lot of this you won't even see once I close up, neck up the top of it, flare it back out over here. But anyway, there it is, it's all turned now.
Okay, there we go. So I've set up a profile on these uh, first four rings after the feature ring. I'll be able to bring my steady rest in right in here. And uh, like I showed you earlier, oh, I got three hands here, but hang on. I was showing you earlier. Now I have about seven inches out in front of where the steady rest would be. So they'll put on those last two rings uh, with no problem turning the inside. I'll turn the inside of these three here in just a moment. Mount my steady rest over here, turn the inside of these three, and mount those other two. Later. Well, I was able to turn the inside of this area of that last three rings I put on and get it flared nicely. This is an unsanded uh, turning right here, back to like right about uh, in there. That's where right. I turned that lip over. That was kind of the same somewhat. It's kind of hard to reach back in there and flare the end. But, uh, have, I did have some chatter more than I'd like to have. Have a couple chips, one right there. It'll have to work out. Another one right there. There's, that's nothing I can't get worked out between sanding and uh, feathering in the next two rings up here. This is going to flare out 12 inches, which is what the base is right here. But uh, what I think I'll do is I'll get the last two rings glued on. And now I'll run the tail stock in and get a hold of it with the cone. The cone here. And uh, go ahead and set the profile up at the outside. And then uh, I can get the steady rest out here when I want to turn the inside of those last two rings. And I should be able to eliminate almost all the chatter there. Anyway, later. So I've set the profile up on the outside, got it all turned. Nothing sanded yet. When I was uh, turning this three or four rings right in here, I got the profile a little flat. I was wanting a little more curvature like this right in here, back this way, but I was able to blend it all together nicely. It's come out quite well, I think. This is not sanded yet, so I still have some sanding to do. It's not too bad. Anyway, here, I'll stop it now. Give you a little closer inspection. All this back in here is sanded to 320, which uh, I'm gonna go all the way up to 1,000 before I apply any sanding sealer, and that will seal it up, slick it up, and then it's gonna be finished in spray lacquer. And uh, this is the part right in here. I just set the profile up. And uh, I still have to turn the inside of the last two rings, this two inch ring of cherry, and then this last segment ring of maple, hard maple and uh, elm, that's some elm right in there. Anyway, so we'll do that next, and then we'll, uh, well, I'll do some sanding on this first. I get the sand to like 320, and then, uh, and then we'll do the inside of that. I'll put the steady rest out in this area, so it'll hold this mouth good and steady, and won't get much chatter, and we'll finish the inside of the mouth. More to come, later. So I'm down to uh, turning the last two rings and flaring this maple out, this two inch maple out. Let the backside flare nicely, and the outside. I hope I can get this to flare out nicely. And we'll leave it uh, about a half inch thick out here. Something like that. Steady rest zone, I shouldn't get much chatter. It uh, turns pretty smoothly. That should do me. 
we get that inside turn, it's staying pretty centered. All the rings are pretty nice. Anyway, see what it goes. Later. Well, I believe it turned out pretty well. I still have to sand the mouth of it. Right here on this outside edge, and inside the flare of the mouth. I still have to sand it. But I believe it turned out pretty well. And then it turned it off. Mouth was a little bit more challenging to turn, but uh, even though I didn't quite get all this pattern lined up, I think it's turned out fairly well. So anyway, there's that. I'll turn all this nice and smooth, get it all blended in, and then uh, clean up, set up the spray booth, and then start getting it ready to put lacquer on. Later. Well, there it is sanded to a thousand. I know. A lot of you guys don't sand that. I agree. I do. I do it before I apply my Mylan's sanding sealer. Solvent-based sanding sealer. And then when I take in a buff off or buff down the sanding sealer, I use three aught, four aught steel wool in that order and buff down the sanding sealer and it gives it a glass appearance. And then I'm going to be spraying on a, a satin uh, clear lacquer. See how it goes, later. So I'm all set up to cut it off the waste block this morning. I have my GoPro set up up there. We'll get a little shot of it as the action turns. Uh, gonna have my wife in here to uh, be my standby person at the stop switch, just in case anything goes wrong. And uh, we'll see what happens. Here we go. I think I have to cut in about two inches to free it, but we'll see here. Almost through.
if I've done it right, I should have a slight <clears throat> undercut. It should be beveled toward the middle where it would sit just out on the outside edge. So I get a straight edge and we'll check that. There's a slight one in that, not a whole lot. It's right about here and it bevels in. So I'll, I'll bevel it just a touch more and we'll be done and sand it up and give it a little coat of wax. sure how well you can see it in the camera. Let's see what I can do to make that a little better. Anyway, there we go. The GoPro stopped recording. <laughs> 